as an AI first company. So if you want to build an AI assistant, just AI. we're announcing that NVIDIA AI, we've been applying AI. Nobody really knows how to do this. AI, artificial intelligence. Yes, artificial intelligence. Generative AI. AI, 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 in AI. In this video, I'm gonna summarize each big tech's AI strategy with a phrase and give an informal review. First, OpenAI, the scaling AI. Back in January 2020, OpenAI published a paper named Scaling Loss for Neural Language Models. It basically says the system will do better when you simply increase the model size, even just with the same structure and data sets. Just like nobody knew about COVID at the time, nobody cared about scaling loss either. Until ChatGPT launched in November 2022, 10 million daily active users in 40 days, we know the rest of the story. It was OpenAI that started this trend of bigger and bigger model sizes exponentially. They applied the scaling laws to other things, DALI to images and store for videos, 3D modeling coming. I think OpenAI really shows how the strong can be stronger. The text to video model Sora was based on the solid foundation of their own DALI and GPT models and their reliable data infrastructure. If there has to be any complaint, it might be the controversy of the nonprofit origin and its closed source practice. Next, Google. It's a harder one, I'm gonna save it for later. In 2016, Google announced itself to move from a mobile-first company to an AI company. When OpenAI took away the spotlight and rocked last year, Google's like, Please allow me to add a different angle here. Many machine learning methods used in today's AI products were first proposed by researchers at Google. A lot of them are open sourced. The Gemini model is pretty good at the benchmarks. The public criticizes things mostly on chaotic naming. Bart was renamed to Gemini for some reason, I don't know why either. And the diversity scene, Gemini created images that involved minorities in historical events that in fact were white men. From ChatGPT and other AI products, we know that large models can mix things up and that we shouldn't treat AI-generated results as facts. That Elon Musk photo was not even generated by Gemini. Because it's Google, people may tend to have a much higher expectation. I get that, but let's be fair. I'd summarize it like this. Google has strong research teams, a wide range of products for potential integration, and an awareness of AI ethics. Meta, the open sourced AI. The Llama 2 model has a leak and accidentally sparked a series of great open source alternatives to ChatGPT. As for criticism, people are concerned about AI safety when such powerful tools are in the wild for everyone to use, and that the model's not open enough due to some restrictions in their terms, and that the model is not as good as the closed sourced ones, aka ChatGPT. I wouldn't complain too much because it's free and you get what you pay for. Another work worth noting is Meta's open source model, Segment Anything. Semantic segmentation is an important research task and is widely performed in the real world. Potentially replacing smaller segmentation models, Meta's foundation model can perform very well in various fields. For example, this paper I contributed to uses Segment Anything to segment roads and turn them into road network graphs, which achieve some cool results. Amazingly, Meta went from a social media platform to Metaverse to something AI. Llama 3 is coming in the next two or three months. It will be integrated into Meta's products like WhatsApp, Messenger, Instagram, and smart glasses. Let's look forward to it. Microsoft, the one backing open AI. <laughs> Microsoft owns 49% of OpenAI and has the right to up to 75% of OpenAI's profits until it pays off the investment money. I think Microsoft's support also played a big part in Sam Altman's return to OpenAI. OpenAI fits well into Microsoft's AI cloud ecosystem. Another good product to mention, Microsoft also acquired GitHub, which owns the Copilot, one of the best AIs for coding. Microsoft is so smart at getting the cool stuff through investment. According to IoT Analytics, despite its strong partnership with OpenAI, Microsoft 
also heavily promotes the usage of other models via its platform. Another key priority for Microsoft is integrating AI capabilities into its existing product portfolio, such as Azure, Microsoft Office 365, and Bing. NVIDIA, the hardware AI. NVIDIA has been selling GPUs to the big techs that we mentioned, and we know selling shovels is always a safe, rewarding bet. The demand for GPUs has been soaring last year, and NVIDIA therefore strengthened its dominant role in the market. Just look at the stock price. It doubled in the past year. What's unique about NVIDIA is its software ecosystem. CUDA differentiates NVIDIA so much in the market other open source libraries like Nemo and Megatron help deliver the value further. NVIDIA has a few competitors including AMD and Intel. The other big techs are working on chips too. Do you think NVIDIA will keep its leading position? Leave a comment below. Tesla, the driving AI. Tesla's approach to self-driving is different as it started with electric cars. Every vehicle it sells has the potential to contribute data back to Tesla, invaluable for training machine learning models. Imagine when a model observes all the places like a human wandering around, it will learn so much about the laws and patterns of the world that we'll be getting something like a world model. No wonder why Tesla is building the foundation models for autonomous robots. Tesla is more than cars. The Tesla robot, named Optimus, is a humanoid robot. It shares some technology with Tesla cars and can do a lot of things. Amazon and Apple, although it looks like not a lot going on with AI for these two companies, we do have some clues. For Amazon, Jesse says he is optimistic that much of this world-changing AI will be built on top of AWS. I agree, from my own experience, running AI on AWS is neat. As for Apple, it plans to disclose more about its plans to implement generative AI into its products later this year, according to Tim Cook. Since Apple has always been good at keeping secrets and announcing right on the release dates, I'd believe they actually have something planned. Because of the scaling loss and the fact that we are now in the wartime, big techs are making cross-team efforts to move quicker. That's why we see the merge of DeepMind and Google Brain. By bringing these teams together, Google not only reduces redundancy but also significantly amplifies its capabilities, driving faster progress in the field. Focus also shifts from academic influence to business needs. Tech giants used to publish papers to enhance their industry influence, but now they no longer publish technical details. While fundamental research remains important, there is a notable shift towards productionization. We see a lot of engineering efforts before and after model training, such as meticulous data cleaning and the active collection of user feedback. The the goal has changed to be more realistic and emphasizes business benefits. Naturally, big techs seek integration of AI technologies into existing products to leverage their vast user bases and data infrastructure. Pure AI technology is not enough to establish a moat. It's always AI plus the advantages in a specific domain. For example, Google says they will use AI to improve search and cloud in its Q4 2023 earning call. Last but not the least, room for startups is not as big as imagined. Big tech companies have all the talents, data, infra, and compute, and can build powerful foundation models generalized to many niche areas. Remember the scaling laws, it sets a high barrier for entry. Startups face big challenges in finding opportunities and securing resources. The overall space is narrower than it might seem, pushing startups to find underserved markets or innovative approaches to make an impact. Before you go, if you're interested in AI trends, contents like this video, don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.